Okay, so we recently talked about um, how to name angles, um, what kind of angles there are. So let's talk about how we can use angles in geometry. One of the uh, types of angles we'll be talking about all year is adjacent angles. Adjacent means beside, so there are two angles that are actually beside each other. They're non-overlapping because there are actually three angles here, this angle, this angle, and then this whole big angle, part plus part equals whole. Um, like we've been, uh, we talked about with segments. Segments and angles do the same thing. Um, so adjacent angles are non-overlapping angles, so that would be this angle here and this angle here. Those are adjacent angles. These two, it's just another drawing. These two angles are adjacent angles. Um, they share a side um, here uh, in the interior, and they share a vertex, this point right here. Okay, so adjacent angles, when we say the word adjacent, that's what we mean, just side by side. The angle addition postulate is similar, like I said, to the segment addition postulate, where the sum of the segments equals to the whole segment. The same thing happens with angles. The sum of the angles equals the whole thing. So angle one plus angle two, those two adjacent angles added together equal the whole big angle, angle AOC. And then an angle bisector is the same as a segment bisector. It is a ray that cuts an angle. So a segment bisector cuts a segment in half, an angle bisector cuts an angle in half um, into two congruent pieces. So this pink line right here would be the bisector. Um, it bisects this whole big angle into two congruent pieces, which I've labeled angle one and angle two. So you would in instantly mark, as soon as you know that it's a bisector, you would go ahead and mark that um, those two angles are congruent so that you have that information in case you need it, which you usually will. Um, some examples that have to do with this, if RST, RST is this piece right here, it's 50, and RSW, which is the whole thing, is 125. Um, so the angle addition postulate says that RST plus TSW should equal to uh, RSW. This is a part plus part equals whole um, problem. So uh, if we call this X, 50 plus X is equal to 125. Now that's way more work than you probably need to do. You see that this is the whole thing, subtract the part, and you can get that um, the other piece is 75. So the 50 and the 75 are adjacent angles that total to 125 degrees. Um, on number two, you're not explicitly told what those angles add up to be. You, two, you do have the two adjacent pieces, x minus 4 and 3x plus 2. You're not explicitly told what they add to, but you are given a hint to that. And that is that angle right there. Um, that little right angle, that little square in the corner, means that those are right angles. That means that it is 90 degrees. So you would say x minus 4 plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 90. Once you've done your setup, all you have left is the algebra to do. Combine your like terms, 4x minus 2 is equal to 90, and then 92 divided by 4 is 23. So we have 4x is equal to 92. 92 divided by 4 is 23. Now, I could have asked how big each, with a, each of those angles were, so always be careful. I asked you to solve for x. I solved for x, and so we're finished with that problem. Number three says if RSW, RSW is this whole thing right here. RSW is 24x plus 10, and RST is this piece right here. It is 10x minus 8. And TSW is this piece here. Be careful. Those things don't always have to look a particular way or be in a particular order. That is why it is important that you label your pictures. Always label your pictures so that you can see what you have. Because your tendency is going to be to want to go part, part, whole. And notice that this is not in that order. This is whole, part, and part. And we always want to assume that that whole number, that, that solid number with no algebra is going to be the whole part, um, the whole piece, but it isn't. So always label your picture so you can see. Now you can see your angle addition you need to do. RST plus TSW is equal to RSW. So we would set it up. 10x minus 8 plus 46 
is equal to 24x plus 10. Once you've set up your geometry, now you do your algebra, combine your like terms. Um, 10x plus 38 is equal to 24x plus 10. Isolate your variable to one side. So we would subtract 10x from both sides and get 14x. We would subtract 10 from both sides and get 28. Now obviously I'm doing some shortcuts here. Uh, you show as much work as you need to. Divide both sides by 2 and you get that x is 2. But notice that I also ask for RSW, the measure of RSW. Well, RSW is 24 times 2 plus 10. 24 times 2 plus 10. 24 times 2 is 48 plus 10 is 58 degrees. Okay, all of those had to do with angle addition, the angle addition postulate. Part plus part equals whole. <clears throat> Just like we had when we did segments, remember that there are three ways for me to tell you that things are congruent. I can tell you with a statement, meaning I will say this is congruent to that and use the congruent symbol. I can mark it in the picture. I can already have it previously marked. Or I can state that a line or array is a bisector. Okay. Now, remember that if I tell you, you need to mark it in the picture. If I call it a, bi a bisector, you need to mark it in the picture. Everything results in this being marked in the picture if you know that pieces are congruent. Always mark it in the picture. And if you don't have a picture, draw one. So for like number four, um, uh, ray BC bisects angle ABD. I see no angle, so I'm going to draw one. Remember, we draw angle ABD. Now, it doesn't matter what the angle looks like, just ABD. But what is important is that the B has to be the vertex. Um, BC bisects, so let's draw it so that it does. It cuts it in half. There's BC. Okay, like I said, bisect means to cut in half, which means automatically I know that those two pieces are congruent to each other. Label them that way. Always label that information. If ABC, so ABC is this piece, is 11x minus 9, and CBD is 8x plus 15, so that's this other piece. Notice what you were given. You were given a part, and you were given a part, and you were not given anything about the whole. There's no way to know anything about the whole piece. All we know is that we know these two pieces, but I know those two pieces are the same size. So they're equal to each other. 11x minus 9 is equal to 8x plus 15. There's your geometry. Now you're done. Set it up and solve it. Isolate your variable. 3x is equal to 24, subtract 8x from both sides, add 9 to both sides, and divide both sides by 3, and you get that x is equal to 8. I ask you to find x, and that's what we have. x is equal to 8. Okay? Again, then notice this next one doesn't have a picture. That's okay. We're going to draw one. Anytime you can, do. BC bisects angle ABD. Um, if ABD... Find the measure of ABD. If the measure of ABC is x squared minus x, and the measure of ABD is x squared plus 3x plus 6. If there are two possible answers, use a comma to separate each answer. Okay, so I'll explain what that means. We've talked a little bit about it, but let's draw a picture first. So I'm going to just draw some random angle. I'm going to label it ABD with the vertex in the middle letter at the vertex. Uh, BC bisects, so it cuts in half, so we're going to label that, and we're going to go ahead and mark that those two pieces are congruent. We're always going to need that. If you have something bisected in there, you're going to need that. Find the measure of ABD. If ABC is x squared minus x, and if ABD, notice that, pay attention, ABD, you're going to tend to want to try to follow patterns like we did up here. You're going to want to do these two pieces, but it's not. This time, I gave you this part, and I gave you ABD, which is the whole thing, x squared plus 3x plus 6. Now, there are several ways you can make mistakes here, so let's catch them now before we make those. Um, what a lot of people want to do is they want to say this, x squared minus x, is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 6, because that's what we just did. But remember, this is the whole thing. If you have the whole thing, you have to do part plus part equals whole most of the time, okay? So what's this other part? Well, this part is congruent to that part. So what I know is that this is also x squared minus x. So now we can set it up with our 
um, angle addition postulate, right? This plus this. So x squared plus x squared, I'm gonna shortcut this a little bit, is 2x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x is equal to the whole thing. Part plus part equals whole. <clears throat> okay, so now we need to combine our like terms. Remember when we're factoring, we always wanna set it equal to zero. I'm gonna pull everything over to the left-hand side simply because I want my x squared to stay positive. So I'm gonna pull minus x squared, so I'm gonna subtract x squared, I'm gonna subtract 3x, and I'm gonna subtract six. When I combine those terms, that gives me x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Okay? Um, so now, factoring problems, always first step, set it equal to 0. Um, factor, so we know automatically we're going to set this up. Let's reverse FOIL. Remember, x times x is x squared, so that's going to go there. These two numbers need to multiply together to give me negative 6. They need to add together to give me negative 5. So I need them to multiply together to give me negative six. Now you are going to, your inclination is gonna to be to go to two and three, okay? And yes, two and three does give you six, but it would be positive two, negative three, or negative two, positive three. Now, you don't always have to write this out, but I think sometimes we try to do too many steps in our head and we get lost. So it's beneficial to write it down. We also have one in negative six and negative one in positive six. So we want these numbers to multiply. So we need one of each, one positive, one negative. They need to give you negative five. See, the, the tricky part is these multiply together to give you six and they add together to give you five if you disregard the signs, okay? That's, the, that's one thing that always happens with six. You have to be careful with. But we need it to be a negative five, so this is what we need. We need the positive one and the negative six. Now remember, after this step, we need each of these to be set equal to zero separately. So we're gonna set x plus one equals to zero, and we're gonna solve that little mini equation. x is equal to negative one. Then we're gonna do this one. We're gonna set this one equal to zero, and we get x is equal to six. Now those are my two potential values for x. Now the only way, remember, the only way they work in the geometry, those are the algebra answers. The only way they work in the geometry problem is if it gives me answers that make sense. Positive angles, positive measurements, okay? I can't have negative angles, I can't have neg negative distances or lengths. So we go back in and we test them. So we check that negative one. Can negative one squared minus negative one, okay? Negative one squared is one plus one is two. Can you have an angle that's two degrees? Yes, it's small, but can you have one? Yes, so one potential answer for ABD is two degrees. Okay, now we gotta check the six, so let's double check. So let's put it in for one of them, six squared minus six. I'll back up and tell you something in just a second. So 36 minus six is 30 degrees. Can an angle be 30 degrees? Yes. So when I say if there are two possible answers, there are algebraically two possible answers and geometrically there are also two possible answers, but that will not always happen. So you do not keep both answers if one of them happens to be negative. If I had only asked you for X, you would say negative one and six. Now this, let me go back and mention this. This is where you have to be careful. When you substitute, be sure you use parentheses because if you type in negative one squared minus a negative one, if you do that on your calculator, you're gonna get zero because it's not gonna square the negative. Always substitute with parentheses. And then you can type that in on your calculator just like that and it'll take care of it. So in this case, there are two potential answers. If I had asked you for X, you would have kept them both. But if this one had not worked or if this one had not worked, even though there were two possible algebra answers, you would have only given me one. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind when, whenever you're doing uh, factoring. Um, number six, the measure of angle one is 3x plus five. I'm gonna label that. I'm kind of already noticing, you see those two are marked the same. That's important. Angle two is 2x minus three. 
and ABC, that's the whole big angle, this whole big angle is 103 degrees. Okay, so I asked for the X and the measure of angle 1. Now here's the problem. This is what you're going to do. You're going to say this plus this equals this because those were the pieces that I gave you. But if you do that, angle addition says the sum of all the parts. So you're leaving off one of your parts. What about angle 3? Well, we do have information about angle 3. Angle 3 is the same size as angle 1. It's marked. So this is 3x plus 5. Now we have the pieces that we need. Let's combine all of these pieces. I'm going to shortcut this a little bit. 3x plus 2x is 5x plus 3x is 8x. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. Positive 7 equals to 103. Now if you need to, write it down. 3x plus 5 plus 2x minus 3 plus 3x plus 5 equals 103. You can write all that down, but you can also shortcut it this way. Take 103 and subtract 7. 8x is equal to 96. And then divide by 8, and you get that x is 12. I also ask for angle 1. Angle 1, come back over here, is 3 times x, which was 12, plus 5. 36 plus 5 is 41. So angle 1 is 41 degrees. I could also find angle 2 and angle 3 if I had asked for that. Okay, so important things to remember, you have part plus part equals whole and part equals part, just like we did with um, segments and um, angle bisectors uh, create congruent angles and there are three ways for me to tell you they're congruent. Okay.